Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be doing a uh, vinyl update video. So yeah, it has been quite a while since I last done one of these. I always tend to say that like out loud, sort of like these videos. But certainly I think this one, like the last one I've done of these was probably about mid-November. So I have like over like the last few months amassed uh, quite a lot of records. I've got a couple of uh, Christmas uh, things to show that which I like I never like got around to showing over like the holiday season there. Like plus like I said, like I've got like some stuff like from like some Manchester record shops like when like I was down there like over new year as well as like some like new releases reissues like all the usual stuff and um, so yeah and um, i'll just get right into it first thing uh, was a, a christmas gift uh, from my good friend a vinyl collector james as um like as always i was and i urge everyone to check out his channel and he very kindly got me this uh, xtc uh, english settlement uh, vinyl box set and um, thing which is really 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 nice like i was quite jealous like of james like, because he like had had like this one and like it looked like absolutely lovely um, like so yeah like, it was very kind of him to get me it um, so yeah it's all nice uh, 200 gram vinyl this this sounds um, like yeah like impeccable um, just on the two record set but I really like the packaging with these ones here you get the CD um, of it which is uh, nice to have and then this really nice detailed booklet here which kind of goes through it because sort of has like passages like from like each member like of the band there's a bit of from Dave Gregory and then it goes through the album kind of track by track yeah just really nice content this one here um, a bit from Teddy Chambers there and yeah it kind of just like I said goes through each song song by song lots of photos in here like which I've not seen so yeah really 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 nice box set would highly recommend uh, the XTC uh, English Settlement. Okay, and another Christmas gift which I was uh, like very grateful to receive um, like was from a uh, Grey Gall. Now Grey, um, I think, still has a YouTube channel. Like I think he's still going like with it. Like he hasn't like uploaded again like a wee while. Like so yeah, it would be nice to see like some more videos. Like but like yeah, like he like rather like out of the blue like just emailed like saying like do you want? I, I would like to send you like some stuff. Like for Christmas, like which I was quite, which I was quite so like taken aback by. I was quite, I was quite, I was quite so like grateful that like he would, um, like sort of doing that. Um, so yeah, like same like a, um, well I say a wee package actually. I got quite a lot in it. Um, so he got me a couple of CDs and then some uh, vinyl records as well. So like a lot of like the ones are very sort of like thoughtful choices. Like um, so so yeah, first uh, two CDs are both their uh, Velvet Underground ones. Not a band I know very much of. I've got their um their classic uh, Velvet Underground and. Nico album but these ones yeah, I think this one's a studio album and I think what I could gather this one is kind of unreleased stuff like in B-side so yeah um, I've still not had a chance to listen to these ones yet but I did really 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 like really like the banana album like that one like so yeah like i'll hopefully really enjoy those two uh, he sent me this one which is uh, the best of the band again not a band which i know too much about i know that like they worked a bit with uh, bob dylan during the 60s like on his uh, what was it um like uh, um like john wesley harding like album like that one um like but this is like just like the stuff like off the band and it's kind of like rootsy like americana kind of country rock sort of thing so not my usual bag like but quite enjoyable though um this one um it was uh, rem's first album murmur which i absolutely loved i really 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 want to get this one like on vinyl now fantastic album here and um, like yeah like probably has my favorite rem song on it uh, radio free europe and um, like yeah great wee album there and this is probably like the best of the bunch like i would say it's my first ever like item by this band Radiohead. I don't own a single thing from them, um, like, but like Grey said, this would be a great album to start with, and it certainly was. I really, 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 really like this album. Like, yeah, like I did. It wasn't. It wasn't quite as. I don't know. As maybe pretentious, like I was maybe like expecting it to be. It was kind of just good. It was good songwriting still. Like at like the core, like off by the album, and um, like so. Yeah, the Benz, fantastic record here. This one came out in 1990. Five, I think this one so yeah that's the Benz and then he got me a couple of their uh, vinyl records which again were all quite considered choices so this first one here is um, a Steely Dan uh, greatest hits collection now like Grey was aware that I'd actually been to see Steely Dan I think it was last year actually and um, like with like my dad like who's like a massive 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 fan of theirs 
Like, and, like, my dad, like, does have, like, all, or, like, pretty sure, like, all, like, most of, like, the albums, like, but this was, a, this was a nice one for me, though, because I'm really kind of just into, like, their hits, and this has pretty much them all on it, like, on, like, a double, and, um, like, record set, so, yeah, you've got all, all, like, classics, like, Ricky Don't Lose That Number, Reeling, In The Years, Peg, uh, Bad Sneakers, yeah, a lot of great stuff on that one, and then a couple of albums by this guy here, who, again, I wasn't really familiar with his music, like, I knew off the name, but, like, Gray said that he's a kind of, like, sort of singer-songwriter, similar vein to, sort of, Paul Simon, and, like, yeah, like, and, like, yeah, like, I could definitely hear that, and, like, I did enjoy both of these albums by Jackson Brown, so the first one is called, uh, what's it called on here, it's just, it's just a bit, like, ring well, like, this one, Late for the Sky, I think this one is called there, um, it's a picture of him, like, on the back, this one, uh, kind of mid-70s, that, that one, and this one is, uh, For Every Man, this album here and there's a um like we know which gray sent as well so yeah really 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 kind of him like yeah um like yeah like again um a big thank you for him for like getting me those okay now before we get on to the various uh, vinyl records i've got a couple of their uh, cds and like so like miscellaneous bits and bobs to show so the first one here was just bought online and um, it's another addition to my xtc collection it's the uh, rag and bone buffet uh, compilation here called their uh, rare cuts and leftovers and it basically is just like what it says like on the tin a lot of b-sides on here a lot of stuff which was never on albums and like yeah so like, you've kind of got like yeah stuff like extrovert which is one of my favorites like heaven is heaven is paved with broken glass and then and then also like the two christmas songs i brought in like as well like which is like one of like, the only places like you can get them so yeah rag and bone buffet really nice cd there now in preparation for my uh like fairly recent review which i done of the color fields and um, virgin and philistines album i bought this one on cd kind of like just because like i was really getting into the color fields i wanted like wanted to own something off theirs like on uh, cd so i settled for this one which is uh, a recent compilation called the very best of the color fields and this is 12 tracks on here and um, really is like the pick off their discography kind of containing and um, like some like singles singles like which didn't make it onto onto the first album and then like we selection like of stuff like from the second al album deception as well so quite basic packaging this one here but a nice wee cd there and this one i bought and um, i think it would have been on black friday like actually and um, like online like it was on like the noel gallagher um online store like they had this one on special offer so i thought that i would pick it up it is uh, the live um international magic live at the o2 and this is a, a two DVD um, and CD set, and they only wanted to think about I think fourteen pounds for this. I like, got on like his web store, so I thought that's fair enough. Like I'll like I'll like get like you get a great concert on here, um, nice little book, um, not too much information in it, though, mind you. But like yeah, you get a great concert like from the O2. You get a bonus DVD which has kind of like acoustic performances on it and music videos, and like then a CD which contains their uh, demos from the first album. So great value for money package here and um, like no gallagher like from his uh, first album okay and then we'll move on to the vinyl records here so i'll uh, we'll start off with a couple of uh, new releases which have um like came out um like over the last month like i think i think i think these two like are both from january so we've got the new album here from uh, field music this is my first new release of their uh, 2020 um, and it is their album called making a new world so yeah like last year really got into field music this one is maybe not one of their best albums it's it's not it's not that it's a long out al album it's actually quite short like by their standards it's only like on like a single vinyl but yeah it's a little bit uh, proggy like in places it's kind of like a, i've read this it's supposed to be a kind of concept album about world war one but i really don't hear that i just hear um like some like yeah sort of like typical field music kind of like style like quite like quite sort of like creative like musically or, yeah like a lot of like hooks like on it but like yeah like it is a bit more kind of um, they are taking themselves a bit more seriously like seriously like on like this record you could say but it does have quite nice artwork on it and this is the uh trans transparent red uh, vinyl version of it there so yeah that's my first album of their uh, 2020 uh field music Okay, now this next one, um, unfortunately, won't count towards like my like 2020 like best of albums like list. Of course, we're still like some way off doing that though, like because it's like a live album. But like I said, like um, still came out like a few weeks back. It is a uh, David Burns 
American Utopia on Broadway. So this is like the live recording, like off like his fantastic tour, like which he's been doing like for like the last um, two years now. Like I seen him do this, I seen him do the show back uh, back in 2018. I think the same year like the album came out. But he's sort of like he's expanded the show like a little bit more. Like he's like included like more Talking Head songs like in like the set. Like and he's sort of like he's like doing like a run of shows like on Broadway. And yeah, this is a fantastic, fantastic live recording of it. It's chock full of tracks. Um, and you've got brilliant artwork on it there. I love that. Um, and the inner sleeves look really nice as well. Or you get like an insert with it, which looks really nice there. So yeah, um, fantastic live record here. I really wish they would do a DVD of this show. Like that's something which I would definitely buy like in a heartbeat. Um, so yeah, that's uh, David Burns' uh, latest live album. Okay, next couple of things here are um, from the last time I went to uh, Unknown Pleasures, and um, probably my favourite record shop like in Edinburgh, like I would say. It was a bit of like slim pickings like last time I went in, um, like but like yeah, like I still came out with these uh, three items. So I got an uh, Elvis Costello single for uh, Every Day I Write the Book. Um, like yeah, like from his uh, 1983 al album Punch the Clock. What I like about Costello singles is again you've got got exclusive B sides, and from what I remember, like, I've not played this again like, in like a wee while. Both these B sides, Heathen Town and Nighttime, were both really, really, really fantastic. So yeah, that's a uh, bit of Elvis Costello there. Okay, and then I got a, a New Order single here. Like I'm not sure yet like, whether I'm gonna collect all of like their 12 inch singles. Like it'll be it'd be quite a fun thing to do, but like, yeah, like, I'm not sure like whether like I really need to get them all, but. I did get this one here, which is uh, for Touched by the Hand of God. Mostly because it isn't actually on the Substance compilation. Plus, it's also a really, really, really good song. So, it's kind of like usual New Order artwork. This is just like the original one on a uh, Factory Records 1987 here. So, yeah, that's a uh, New Order. And then I was quite lucky to find this uh, Lloyd Cole album here, um, which is called Like a Broken Record. Um, and, like, yeah, this is from 2010. Um, and this is a good album, this one here. I don't quite like it as much as Standards. I think Standards has a bit more variety of sounds. Like, plus, like, his latest one, Guesswork, is a bit more, like, electronic-y, like, a little bit different. This one is kind of just Lloyd and a guitar, so it's a bit more kind of singer song y Like, more, like, so, like, what, like, we're used to, like, with Lloyd Cole. But still really, really good, though. Again, you've got really nice artwork on there. I love that. Love that photo of him there. And this is on, um, again, I think a really heavy 200 gram vinyl pressing this one. And this is only, yeah, I think, £14. So, yeah, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite rare, like, you see this one, like, out, like, in the wild. Like, I know you, I know you can still get it, like, online, but it was still, still nice to pick it up, like, in, like, an actual record shop. Okay, now all of the next load, um, come from the last time I was down in Manchester. So, um, like, I'd done a bit of, like, a, um, like, record store crawl, like, through, like, so, like, Manchester. Um, starting, like, in, uh, the shop in Stretford, um, real around fountain records and i must say um like when i first the first time i went to that shop it was really 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 fantastic it's it's still it's still a great shop just this time i was maybe like unlucky unlucky like with that stuff they maybe like didn't have like quite like what like i was like going for well saying that i wasn't really going for much like to be honest i was kind of just i was kind of kind of just going for like a like we like look around but as usual i still came out with a few goodies and um, so i got um a tame impala album here and um, like not sure i gave like you know but i do rather like this band like this is um i think their debut album here it's uh, inner speaker they've got a new one coming out like in a new one coming out like in like a couple of weeks like, which i'm really excited about but this is the first record of theirs which i own inner speaker and yeah this is fantastic stuff here and um, again great artwork like on it Nice lyrics like on the inside, and I don't think this is a coloured one at all or anything. But again, this was pretty cheap. This one, um, it wasn't. It wasn't in the. I can't remember like if it, if it was in the shrink wrap or not. But aye, this is just this is just a black vinyl. But it is a fantastic record. Um, this though. Um, so yeah, can't go wrong with a bit of Tame Impala. Okay, and then um, I found this uh, single here, uh, House Martin single for Build. Um, like yeah, like um. Yeah, I'm just trying to sort of like collect like these House Martin singles. Like, there's not many of them. Like, there's um, there's not many of them. Like, plus they're quite fun to collect. Like, they've got all like exclusive B sides. And yeah, you've got a great B sides. I got a called uh, Forwards and Backwards is really good. And then you've got an alternative version of uh, The Light Is Always Green, which is one of my favourite House Martin songs. So yeah, this is only I think yeah, I think like two or three pounds. But yeah, nice to get a copy there of Build. And now this next record was something like of a blind buy, like I would say. Like I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure, like whether like you would call it like a blind buy, like or not. Like, but like it was kind of like it is like a record like which you hear like a lot of people like talking about uh, Johnny Marr, like for one like 
for one like was a massive massive fan like of like this artist she's been very like influential like on many musicians and like i'm like when i seen it i thought 12 pounds not a bad price considering it is supposed to be such a classic album uh got easter by uh, the patty smith group um, and like also like knew the song like because of night so yeah it doesn't really count like as like a blind buy like if i knew that like, one of the songs i've got it but i love that song because of the night unfortunately though for me on first listen the rest of the album just didn't match up to that song and yeah i, I just wasn't a massive fan of it plus what also maybe slightly pissed me off was um was that uh, later like in like another store like i went to like on the same day in fact found like a similar copy of it for three pounds which i would have been more than happy like paying for but yeah 12 pounds it was like uh, i maybe should have like given this one a pass um or like maybe i like, at least like listen to it like before like if i was to compare it to anything musically it reminds me of like tom petty's first two records which probably like isn't much like of a coincidence considering this one was produced Produced by Jimmy Iovine like you would later work with Tom Petty but this is just like a cheap reissue reissue of it as well like on like the fame label so it's not even like it's not even worth like all that much so yeah and um, I'm not I, it's still it might grow on me you never know but like as of now I'm not massively like digging uh, Patty Smith unfortunately okay and then we went round to uh, uh, shopping Cholton King B records and again it's slightly slim pickings like there like I've got uh, this one here which is um which is um an album by um this guy was for member of the teardrop explodes and i don't know much of his solo stuff but i thought for three pounds this one might be worth giving it a shot it's a uh, julian cope and this is his uh, album saint julian here um so yeah this is uh, from 1980 Seven, I want to say like 87 like or 86 I'm not too sure um and yeah this one it just has um you've got like the like original like insert with it as well there and so yeah not too bad for three pounds there I don't think I've played this one yet so like I still I still can't pass comment on it but I will leave that aside to play um after the video Okay, and then I also came across uh, this one here, which was a bit of a steal, like at uh, six pounds. I found uh, Prefab Sprout's album Jordan the Comeback, which, um, which yeah, like it's been recently reissued at this one here, like on like a double vinyl. This is the original one though, on a uh, single vinyl. So they have crammed in like a lot of tracks, like it's about an hour long, like this album. Like so, yeah, there are there are like yeah, like a lot of tracks like on here. And I must say, it it, it isn't one of my favourite Prefab Sprout albums. I probably do prefer Swoon and um steve mcqueen but there are still some good stuff on here like probably yeah, my favorite track is uh, looking for atlantis that's definitely definitely the standout track on the album but yeah it is nice to get a uh, um like nice cheap cup cheap copy of it just on a kitchenware records for that one okay and then just as i was about to like go and pay for those two things like i seen like up on the wall like they had like a wee selection of books and this one like just sort of like um caught my eye it's this uh, elvis costello one and i don't think i think this is just called elvis costello but it's basically a kind of like a, it is it was published at 1981 so pretty much at the height like of like his success and it basically is just the story of his career up to that point so yeah like quite informative this one here bit of artwork like in it like as well but yeah you just got like yeah it's a nice cover like to it um and like yeah it's sort of like it's kind of is it's good it's a good read this one because it's kind of a sort of like um contemporary look like at like his like career like from the time like it's not sort of like uh, shrouded like in nostalgia like and sort of like a and like sort of like exaggeration like of like events of that it's like very much sort of like taken like from the point of view like of being of like being there like at, at the time that like, when like he was like rising like up the charts and like that so yeah a great wee book here um like elvis costello this was uh, three pounds as well Okay, and then the next two were uh, from uh, Central Manchester uh, record shop. So this one um, is from I think the Vinyl Exchange. I got this one here, which is only three pounds. Like, but I would have maybe um, I didn't I didn't actually realise that when I got it, like got it like this single like came with a so like a fancy like picture sleeve like and like that. But I still like got it like for three pounds. So it's uh, a House of Love single. This one is for Shine On, probably like the most popular song I'd say. And again with House of Love singles, you got exclusive b-sides this one has songs called uh rosalyn and allergy like on the back of it both of which are really really good so yeah and um, that's the house of love and shine on and then i was quite excited to see this album i think he wanted 12 pounds for it like but like when i went to go and like pay for it 
like he like basically like like basically like it's like one of like these record shops like where like they keep the records sort of like behind the counter so like, when he brought it over like i got a wee glance like at the vinyl and like it kind of told me that it was most definitely a bootleg but um it's still a rare album though to come across and i am um like glad to finally have a copy of it it is uh, the undertones first album and um, except this one has kind of like got like some bonus tracks on it as well so for instance this one opens with teenage kicks which the original one didn't but is a amazing song so like yeah why not like open it with like you've also got like get over you like on here and like in total there's uh 21 tracks packed onto a single vinyl so yeah this doesn't sound great i might still look out for like a like reissue of it like or like maybe or like or like maybe like that recent like and um, hits compilation like what's come out from there and that might be like a good one to go to but yeah like but like yeah like it was just like when i seen this was the vinyl i was a bit like ah oh, that's definitely definitely like a bootleg like or something there and um, like but still it is the music what matters and yeah the undertones were one of the great bands like off like the late 70s like into the early 80s and this was a, a pretty solid debut album from them the next ones now came from uh, the record shop in Bolton, which I always tend to do very well at. Um, it's called X Records. Definitely like recommended. Um, I picked up this one, which is a Roddy Frame solo album, like former uh, frontman songwriter of uh, Aztec Camera. It's his uh, album, which is uh, called uh, Western Skies here. Um, and this is a fairly recent one from 2006, originally released this as a, a 2014 reissue of it. And this is um, kind of like acoustic-y mostly, like I would say. It's not, it's not sort of like as like, pop-driven like as Aztec Camera, but it's still pretty good though. He's still got like a lovely voice, like, and like he's a very like talented like guitar player. And yeah, just on like black vinyl here. It's certainly, like, I think it picks up like on the second side of this album, like from what I remember. I think I really like the song Day of Reckoning, but certainly the first side like is kind of like sort of like folky, like acoustic like sort of songs, which is quite nice, like if like that's like the mood, like what like you're in. So yeah, uh, Western Skies uh, album from uh, Roddy Frame. And then I picked up a couple of uh, Cure singles here, um, like one a seven inch and one a twelve inch. Uh, this one I got because it's one of my favourite Cure songs, and the album it's on is very difficult to get for whatever reason. They've not reissued uh, the Wish album, but I was quite glad to see the single for High, which is yeah one of my favourite Cure songs. This is backed with uh, the Twilight Garden, and this was again quite a cheap pick up there, so quite glad to find that one. Okay, and this one was also like a real bargain. It's a uh, love song from the Disintegration album, and again something which i'd never come across before but you only wanted two quid for it so i was like yeah why not well um why not like we'll take that original like on fiction records it's it's a little bit sort of like um um i'm not sure like what like the word sort of creased like the sleeve there but don't really matter um like yeah like it's not in amazing condition but it is nice and um, like for the collection though so that's our love song and another single, another House Martin single, actually. Um, I finally picked up a copy of their Caravan of Love. Uh, very common single. This one like, was a, uh, wasn't quite a Christmas number one. Was kept off number one by I think a, a Jack, I think a Reap Petite by uh, Jackie Wilson, um, like which like uh, pissed Paul Heaton off like a little bit. Um, like, but yeah, Caravan of Love. Um, like yeah, like a um, nice song. Like it is a maybe maybe like a guilty pleasure song, like you could say. But the thing with this single is all the songs on it are in that same kind of acapella style and for me all aren't quite as good as caravan of love unfortunately um like so yeah like it was kind of like it was kind of just like a one-off like release like from like the house martins they never normally did like this style like of like music it was very like unrepresentative like off like their like usual sound like and style like but was still their biggest hit though and like yeah um another nice addition to the uh, singles collection which i've built up off theirs Okay, and then a couple of their uh, albums from the same shop. I got um, a copy of this uh, Cars album here, which I was um, like missing. It's a uh, Panorama, and this one I think is their third album. And um, so I've got, I've already got um, the debut, and I've got a uh, Candy O. Um, so this is the third one, Panorama, and this was a slightly different sound to what I was expecting. It was a bit more like electronic-y, like and synth-driven, like that, like I was maybe like expecting, like but still really good though. And um, this one has the original like sleep with it so you just got the lyrics and sort of picture like off the band there 
and it's on uh, Alexa Records, this one. So yeah, that's an um, album there by The Cars. Okay, and then I also got this one, which is a uh, Godly and Creme album. This was, I believe, their second release after um, leaving uh, 10cc. Um, in 1976, I want to say. So this one came out though, like 78, so like after the Consequences album, which was a very experimental one. I think this one is just called L. I want to say. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm still not sure. Yeah, it's just called L. This album. Um, um, and like yeah, it's getting, it's kind of Godly and Creme sort of like usual style, quite quirky. Maybe not the most easiest to listen to like at times, like but still a very creative, very wacky album. Really nice, like, um, like packaging for this one. You get a nice insert there with the lyrics and a nice, like, photo collage off them, like, on the back, which is really cool. And it's just on the usual um, Mercury records for this one here. So, yeah, that's a bit of Godly and Creme there. Okay, and then also when I was down in Manchester, like, visiting family, like, I went for the day to Liverpool. And I've never actually been record shopping, like, in um, record shopping, like, in Liverpool before. Like, I usually, like, when I go, it's usually just for, like, so, like the touristy, like, Beatles East, like, sort of stuff, like, which, like, I've only, like, uh, which I could have only like ever gone for like but this time I actually went around some of the city's record shops and I must say I wasn't disappointed that this first shop I think was called Dig Vinyl like it's in like a sort of like a clothing retailer like as well as well it's like a vintage clothing slash mod mod clothing sort of like retailer and um, like and like they've got like a wee like record shop like upstairs and they had some really really interesting like really rare stuff like and um, I was all I was very tempted to get they had an original copy of the Beautiful South album, The Owl, like the one like with like the dogs like on like the cover, like the gramophone cover. Very, very tempted to get that, um, like, but unfortunately I didn't. I didn't have enough money. I just spent like all my money like on like those ones like from like the previous like few days. Like, so I had to really like limit myself. But yeah, like I still came out like with quite a few um, like items here. So I got an album by uh, Bebop Deluxe here, um, which is a band which um, James Lobben like has been sort of like, mentioning to me, like especially that's sort of, like the leader. Like of the band that like Bill Nelson, like James is like quite a fan of like some of his solo stuff, and this is probably well, this is probably like their most popular album called Sunburst Finish, and it's a uh, yeah, it is really good. It reminds me a bit of a kind of more sort of like rockier version like of 10cc kind of thing. Like it's sort of like it's got that sort of like quirky element to it, but then it also like sort of like rocks rocks like quite hard like as well. Um, so yeah, like Bebop Deluxe um, and another good band of this one from 1970. I want to say on this one. I also picked up this uh, Morrissey single, which I'd never seen before. Uh, it's uh, for the song Off Rank, which is taken from the Kill Uncle album. So, yeah, not one of his best albums, but a pretty good song there. Back to uh, two, like, again, unique B sides. A song called Journalists Who Lie, which is probably like, the most Morrissey song title, like, going. And then a song called Tony the Pony, which again is another kind of. Um, like another sort of, sort of typical modesty song title there, but yeah, like nice artwork to it though for the single R Frank. And then I also picked up this one, another 10cc related um, item here. Like again, like I'd recently reviewed that like, their debut record, like so, like I'd been like on like a bit of like a 10cc kick, um, like um, so yeah, like, yeah, I was quite pleased to find this album. It's by Hot Legs, which was the band like which um, which Kevin Godley, Log Krem, and Eric Stewart were in before. Uh, um, um, before I keep, I keep, I keep what I say. XTC before 10CC were formed. So this came out, this is actually though a compilation, um, which is a bit strange, like, considering that they only had, they they only had that like, one album, um, but this is basically just compiles, I think pretty much everything that Hot Legs like ever recorded. Um, so yeah, quite a unique find this one here, like not something that which I see like every day. Um, and like this is actually like rather good, like from what like I remember. It's, like it's a bit more sort of like old school like rock and roll, like sort of like um like, sort of, like when I like, compared to like the more quirky um like ten cc debut album, but still very good stuff though. So yeah, that's uh, a bit of hot legs. Okay, and then the final one from Liverpool, this is from a different shop though. I've for the life of me, I cannot remember like what like this store was called, but again they had a lot of really interesting, like really like rare stuff. This be one of them. It's an album which hasn't been reissued at all, and like yeah, like I'm um, becoming a big fan of theirs. Um, it's the classic debut album by Ride, and it's called Nowhere. I'm sorry for like the terrible lighting, like in here, like as well. But this is a original pressing of it, which is quite difficult to come by. And again, it, again, it's what another album which has not been reissued at all. Um, like so yeah, like, so yeah, someone like definitely that like, needs to go onto that. What also makes this copy special is it's a promo one as well. It's not a white label, but you've got a kind of like there's a promo letter. It's unfortunately ripped. 
Like, but it basically just sort of like, um, like says like Ride will be releasing like this album and it sort of like explains. It's basically just like the press release like with like the tour dates, which is quite a unique sort of like artifact there. And then you've got the original like inner sleeve to it there. And the label looks like that. So yeah, very, very, very glad to get this one. And um, it's a fantastic album, like just a classic, classic record here. And um, like definitely like the best album, like the signature Ride, al Ride album. So yeah, that is Nowhere. Okay, and then we'll just finish with some uh, random bits and bobs here, um, like this. Um, this one I bought on, I think, uh, the Black Friday Record Store Day. But like again, like since I've not done like a like update, like since like the start of November, like I've not had a chance to show this one. But it was uh, the Charlatans album Up at the Lake, which I think was a Record Store Day issue, like from like a few years back. And um, this one again, have I played this one? I can't, I can't actually remember, which is a bit bad. But it, this one originally came out in. 2004 it says like on the back here so it was again like kind of like from like that mid period that like, when like the charlatans like were kind of like again just pumping out like a lot of albums like what they really need to do like is just like get on like and like reissue like some like off like their mid of some of like their mid 90s stuff like when like they were like really 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 good because like yeah like although like again i've said that i've played this album i really i don't think it was all that memorable so yeah that's uh up at the lake though uh, the charlatans i also finally broke down and got this album which i've been holding out to hopefully get like an original of it like but in the end i just settled for a reissue of uh, the beautiful south's 0898 which is their third album and i would say probably their best um, I think this is a cracking, cracking album. Yeah, there's a lot of variety like on it, uh, but throughout it, it's just great songwriting. And like, yeah, you've got really nice artwork on it like as well, uh, just as the lyrics. And then each song like has a little picture on it as well. Like, I really wish that they'd release maybe like maybe like a singles box set like or something. And like each had like one of like these like artworks like as the sleeves, like, sleeves. I think that would have been really, really cool. Um, like, but yeah, like, like that's the inner sleeve. And then the record label just looks like that. So yeah, brilliant record here from the Beautiful South. 1992 this one came out, I think. Um, so yeah, that's uh, 0898. And then sticking with the Beautiful South, um, I got this one, which has been uh, reissued, uh, thankfully. It's one of their later al albums. And like I said, uh, yeah, it's strange that like, they haven't reissued Quench or Blue is a Colour, but they have done this one, uh, which is uh, Painting It Red. Um, and again, this is a, one of their best albums. It's a very long album. It's a double album, 20 tracks in it, so chock full of stuff. But there are still some good tracks in here. I like Closer Than Most. I like uh, Till We Can't Tuck It In. Um, you can call me leisure. Yeah, there's a lot of like good stuff like on like this album and um, well I will show I'll quick I'll quickly show like so like the inner um sleeve of it and that it's just got that on the gate ball so we pitch check like, off the band and then the inner sleeves just have the lyrics on them I believe. So yeah, quite basic packaging, but still not a bad record here, painting it red. Okay, now I've got another album now by uh, Field Music. Um, I'm almost complete on them, like I would now say. Like again, like a lot of like the stuff is, again, it's all been reissued. Like it's all, it's all still, I don't think, I, I'm not sure like, if it'd be reissued. Like all, like if like the originals are just, are just still like very easy to come by. But this was only, only I think about 15 quid like on Discogs. So I got a copy of Measure, um, which is probably like their most acclaimed album, I would say. And it, is a brilliant record came out in 2009 it says like on the back here and again it is a long record but it is amazing it's just a brilliant 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 album here and um, um, like yeah like favorites on here are uh, them that do nothing is a great song uh, let's write a book uh, the rest is noise yeah there's a lot of like great stuff on this album quite nice artwork to it as well on the inside and I don't think there's anything too special about the... Oh, yeah, actually, I think you get the CD like, with this one as well, I want to um, I wanna say. Yeah, you do, which is um, quite a nice touch as well. So, yeah, that is um, Measure by Field Music. Okay, now, also, a few months back, um, it was announced that um, three albums by The Blue Nile would be getting reissued. Came slightly unfortunate timing, considering that I had paid a bit of an arm and a leg for the first two of their albums. But like, no matter though. Um, though, like, it's, it was still nice to get like originals off those, and like, grateful to get a reissue off uh, this one, which is a piece at last here. Now, I must say, this isn't quite as good as Hats, and it's not quite as good as Walk Across the Rooftops, but still not a bad album. It kind of just it sort of like your sort of like your typical like Blue Nile fair, like Polly Cannon's luscious voice on it, like sort of like very relaxed and very sort of peaceful album like as like you might 
look as like like as like you might like be able to gauge like from the title and um, like so yeah this is um a pretty good record here uh by the blue nile came out in 1990 there too, I think this one. Yeah, the same kind of vibe like as the Blue Nile was this one, uh, which was actually bought in a HMV. Like they had a, a kind of like a bit of like a post Christmas sale, and for like and like for like whatever reason, this album was reduced down to I think twelve pounds. So I thought, why not? Like, well, um, why not? I like, will add it to my collection, and it's there uh, by Talk Talk, and it's Laughing Stock. So Talk Talk's last album. And uh, again, this is a really unique album. It's, it's sort of, it's very kind of ambient, like kind of style, like very, yeah, just very, very um, immersive sort of album, this one here. It is, um, a lot of people really consider this like a masterpiece. And this one and Spirit of Eden, like, are both considered to be among some of the greatest albums, like, of all time. So, yeah, like, it was nice to add this one to the collection. I don't think this one has a CD with it, though, like Spirit of Eden did. But um, we have still got, like, an inner sleep of it, which has all the lyrics to it. And, um, yeah, it's just gone. It's not like a black label there. So, Laughing Stock, the last Talk Talk album. And, yeah, it is, um, like, yeah, a really, really fantastic, really moving listen. Okay, now, the one I've saved for last was a Discogs purchase. And, um, yeah, it's an album which I've just really, um, in recent months, just fallen in love with. And it's one which I was kind of desperate to get my hands on. But, again, never been reissued. I kind of had to sort of, like, go down, like, the online route to get um like a copy of it and um, like but it is um by a band called the trash can sinatras and they're a scottish band they were on the same label like as the house martins go discs like that's how like i kind of like um saw uh, that's how i sort of like discovered them um and yeah it's a fantastic album this one it is cake so this is a debut album from 1990 and just a really great 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 album if I, if I kind of could sort of like describe it I'd say it's very acoustic sort of like driven songs like but they've kind of got sort of, sort of like an echoey kind of vocals like around them it's it is it's just it's just an interesting like sound to this one here and um, I'm like yeah like I like how he sort of like I'm not sure like I'm not sure like what the vocalist calls but he actually sings like with like his like sort of like his like natural accent like which like I think like, gives it like a really nice like authentic touch and yeah some probably my favorites on here are Obscurity Knox, which is probably, probably like the most popular song. Maybe I Should Drive, uh, Even the Odd, uh, Circling the Circumference, uh, You Made Me Feel is really good as well. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, the whole album like is like really fantastic and nice like artwork to it as well. Nice picture like off the band, the gift slightly um, like blurry, although from like artistic effect there. And um, like, yeah, it looks, looks like rather cool this one. Um, and the record is just on, like as I said, Go Discs. So yeah, like a lot of great bands, like a lot of great bands, like on like Go Discs, like around this time, like and um, like these guys are beautiful sad. Uh, Paul Weller signed to them, like signed to them, like as well. So yeah, they had a good, a good, a good roster, like of bands, like. But again, something which has never been reissued, but something which, like yeah, um, like I really think should because I think more people like need to discover this album, like need to hear the Trash Cans and Archers. Okay, so that's me come to the end of this uh, vinyl update video. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed. I know it's been a bit of like a lengthy one, but yeah, I did have a bit of a um, like backlog of stuff like to show. But yeah, I hope you have enjoyed. As usual, if there's anything like if there's anything like what like, you want me to like review like in more detail, please do leave it down below in the comments. And I will see you all next time for the next video. Goodbye.